Pastor Toby is going to come and talk about entertainment standards. This is, a, I think, a really important topic for you guys to really meditate on and really apply in your lives and become leaders in this area to your group of friends. So uh, before, uh, one more announcement before he comes up. You can go ahead and start walking up, Pastor. Um, we have tonight, we have dinner back at CJ's. So after here, we're going to go over to CJ's. And then we have a panel on feminism. It's going to be really good stuff. And uh, so, so be ready for that. So please welcome Pastor Toby and host of Cross Politic. Well, thank you very much for that warm, enthusiastic welcome. It's Thursday afternoon and you're still excited. Good to be here. I, you know, and I have to say, I was just telling Mrs. Lloyd a moment ago, I, I, you guys, y'all must be exhausted. I, I, I have an office right here in the, in the entryway here, and maybe you've noticed, but I just get tired watching you come in and out. <laughs> I'm like, I, I need a nap now. <laughs> so um, uh, as um, Mr. Wrench just said, Mr. Gabe just said, I'm uh, here to talk to you about um, entertainment standards, and I want to I want to frame this in a couple of different directions. I want to frame it initially in terms of entertainment standards, in terms of consumption. So what are you consuming? What are you actually being entertained by? But this is the called conference, and we're talking about also preparing you for life. Some of you are interested in the entertainment industry. Some of you are interested possibly in being authors, movie makers. Uh, maybe you want to make, you want to be a content maker or a content creator. You're interested in entertainment more broadly. And so I want to, I want to um, somewhat um, break this talk in half with the idea of standards being the unifying feature, but um, not just limit it to what entertains you now, but think about how what entertains you now is you practicing um, training for what you might create. So if you're interested in possibly being um, an entertainment um, creator um, of some sort, um, we're going to get there as well. Um, let me pray and ask God's blessing on our time. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that is sufficient that you speak to us and it addresses everything that we need to have addressed for our lives. Um, you don't leave um, anything untouched uh, that we need to know. We thank you for that. We ask that your word now would be living and active um, and powerful in our lives. Um, uncover the things that need uncovered in our hearts and in our minds. Um, shine your light on us so that we might bring your light uh, to this dark world. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to read three verses from the book of Proverbs. I'm mostly going to be working from the book of Proverbs um, this afternoon. This is Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. It's Proverbs 13, 20. Whoever, and this is another one, whoever keeps the law is a discerning son, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. Proverbs 28, 7. Or here's a third one. Whoever loves wisdom makes his father rejoice, but a companion of harlots wastes his wealth. So you have positives and negatives in each one of those proverbs, and on the negative side of things, you've got fools, gluttons, and harlots. Sounds like Hollywood. Right? Fools, gluttons, and harlots. So I want to take these Proverbs and several more like them, and I want to I push them in um, specifically by thinking about entertainment as a form of community. Entertainment as a form of companionship. Entertainment as a form of Friendship. So think about, um, when I talk about entertainment, I'm using the word entertainment a lot, but I want you to be constantly filling in what I mean by that. So I'm thinking of things like books. I'm thinking of things like movies. I'm thinking of things like music. I'm thinking of things like social media even. I'm thinking of things like video games. Uh, am I missing anything? 
you can holler something out. I don't know. There's something else that's entertaining to you. Um, watching paint dry. Okay. You guys, I won't forget about you guys. Okay, um, I'm watching sports, sporting events, right? This can be entertainment um, as well. Um, but, so, but think about all of those things. When I say entertainment, be thinking about all of those, those things all together. And think of them, about them. I want to develop this idea that um, they, they fall under a certain way of thinking about community and friendship and companionship. All right. So think of entertainment as an extension of the biblical category of friendship or um, a companion. Entertainment, what's entertainment for? Entertainment is for relaxing, right? That's a good thing. You get tired, you get tuckered out, and you just say, whew, I need, just, I need a good book, I need a good movie, I need, a good, I, just, I need to plug something in and I listen to something. It's for relaxing. Uh, entertainment makes you laugh, right? Good, a, lot of, a lot of good entertainment. It's funny. Um, uh, entertainment's for encouragement, just lifts you up and encourages you. Um, you're, you're, you're down, you're, um, you're worn out, you're stressed, and good entertainment encourages you. Good entertainment is, um, tells good stories. It's gripping. Uh, it's intriguing. You want to know what, f- what happens next. And so you, you, you keep turning the pages. You can't quite bring yourself to turn it off, even though it's bedtime. Um, It's gripping, it's intriguing, it's got a good story. Uh, Good entertainment challenges you. Good entertainment challenges you. Uh, It it might not be exactly what you thought uh, the story was going to be, and and sometimes it's challenging. You're not you're not sure if you can stick with it, or the movie isn't going quite like you thought it was going to go, or the game is more difficult than you thought it was going to be, and so it can be challenging as well. Uh, good entertainment is, uh, brings a different perspective to bear on things. Maybe uh, a movie or a show or a book um, or an article even um, brings a different angle on something. I've never thought of it like that. Or you see somebody um, experiencing the world or reacting to something in the world in a way you, you're like, I, I, don't, I don't think I would react that way. I don't think I would, resp- but they, huh, interesting. So you see different perspectives. Maybe you see an angle on things you, you wouldn't have thought of. Um, good entertainment, um, it, causes, it, it makes you want to talk about it. Maybe even argue about it sometimes. That was a great movie. No, it was horrible. It was awful, right? There, there's all kinds of ways in which entertainment you might make you want to talk about it. What was that all about when that happened in that scene? Um, I didn't follow that. I didn't understand that. Or, or um, again, some kind of argument. I, I thought it was terrible when the, mo- you know, when the movie went that way or when the book went that way. Or I thought it was horrible when that, you know, the third volume, oh, it was just terrible, you know. No, that was great. I thought it was wonderful. It makes you talk about it. It makes you argue about it. All of these are wound together with community. All the things I've just described that good entertainment does, actually good friends do, Right? Good friends make you laugh. Good friends challenge you. Good friends are intriguing, surprising. Good friends are, they, they, they're good for good discussion and they, they argue with you. They bring a different perspective. They like weird things and, and they think you like weird things, right? And, and so all of these things are bound together with community. So think of entertainment and friendship and community going together. In the beginning, God created Adam, and he was good, but he wasn't good, it wasn't good for him to be alone. And so part of what I want to argue um, this afternoon is that this statement um, is about community, but I also want to argue that it's actually a statement about uh, the goodness of entertainment. Entertainment is actually bound up in this idea of community. So God created Eve. Why? Help Adam. Good. And that would include things like talking to Adam. Right? I think we should plant the strawberries over here. It gets more sun. Or that's way too much sun. All right? Eve was going to talk to Adam, talk about the world with Adam. Did you see the shooting star? 
Did you see the, you know, are you sure that's a shooting star? Yeah, it's a shooting star. We've only been here for two days, honey. Yeah, um, it, I'm calling it shooting star, right? Okay, there, okay, but she's going to talk about the world that she sees, and she's going to talk to her husband about the world, and he's going to see things in the world, and he can have someone to talk to other than the zebras, right? They don't, there's not a lot of give and take there, right? And so he's got a helper, a companion, a friend, a spouse, a wife, and she's going to see the world, the world that he sees. She's going to experience the world, the world that he sees. And she's going, to, he's, she's going to talk about it with him, and they're going to enjoy it together. You see the connection there between friendship and community and entertainment. Can you see that? Can you see that connection? I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep unpacking it, make it even clearer for you. So God also included in this the command to take dominion over the earth, Right? Go, be fruitful, fill the earth, take dominion, rule over everything. Dig it up, discover it, go down into the ocean, shoot some guy up to the moon, right? Plant stuff, dig stuff up, pack it together, make stuff. This whole place is full of crazy good stuff. Go ahead, go, find it, go find it, okay? The, this this um, dominion mandate, this command to take dominion over the whole world implies technology and art. It implies technology and art. Entertainment fundamentally is the result of exploring the world and talking about it in creative ways. Entertainment is the result of exploring the world and talking about it in creative ways. Maybe you talk about it by taking a picture of it and sharing it. Look at that! Crazy, right? Saw that. Did you see that? That's crazy. Oh my goodness, right? Or you write about it, and then I was in the jungle, and the snake fell on my head. Right? Okay, and I'm still alive. Right? Send. Right? That's entertaining. Right? You're telling something about the world that you saw, that you experienced, and you're sharing it. You're, you're telling someone else through some kind of technology. So technology and art go together to create entertainment. These things go together. Entertainment is the result of exploring the world and talking about it in creative ways. Entertainment is the result of digging into the world, rearranging parts of it, and then sitting back and enjoying it. Right? You, you do something with the world, rearrange it in some way, and sit back and say, oh, that's great. And then maybe inviting someone else to enjoy it with you. Look, I put all these pieces together. Look, yes, I call it TV. Okay? Right? Here, I put all this together. I call it iPhone. Put all these pieces together. Look, you don't see? And look, we're going to send signals, and I'm going to put some guy over there, and he's going to dance for you. Okay? There you go. Watch this. Watch this. Entertainment is the result of digging into the world, rearranging parts of it, and then sitting back and enjoying this. When we do this, we are imitating the way God made the world. In Genesis 1, God... He says, let there be light, and then what does he do? He separates the light from the darkness and says, you're going to be called day and you're going to be called night. And he says, this is evening and morning, the first day. Ah, that's very great. Perfect. Right? He, re- he makes stuff, rearranges it, sits back, and enjoys it. You know, the first day wasn't a whole lot on TV yet. But God was entertained. Day and night, look at him going. Right? That's what he did. And then day two, he comes and he creates... The firmament, the sky, the heavens, and it separates the waters above and the waters below. And he says, this is really, this is great, super. Look at that. Heaven, earth, yeah, this, is, this is really, this is good work. Sits back, day two, he enjoys it. He says, this is good, right? Day three, let's separate those waters below. You know, let's make ground, right? Let's make ground. Let's make earth and plants. How about some plants, Right? Does it, again, he's rearranging parts of creation, and then he sits back and he enjoys it. He does this all week long, and then, of course, ultimately, he sits back and relaxes on the seventh day and rests. He sees it all, and he says, it's all very good. So, in a sense, Sabbath is a day to be entertained. It's not the only thing, but you're, you're sitting back and you're enjoying what God's made. You're sitting back and you're enjoying what your hands have made. You're sitting back and enjoying what what God has blessed you with. This is what Sabbath 
reminds us to do. And when we do that, we are imitating God. So the point of all this is just to point out that entertainment is good, okay? Entertainment in and of itself is part of God's good creation. The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. This is what the Westminster Shorter Catechism question one answer says. This is the chief end of man, to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And we enjoy him by enjoying what he's made. So community, friendship, entertainment are good things. Right? God created Eve so that Adam would have a friend who would see the world differently than him, would talk about it from a different perspective than him, would share those experiences together so that they would be entertained by one another's different perspectives. You like the blueberries? You like rhubarb? I wouldn't put that in your mouth, honey. Right? No, really, try it. It's good. Right? That's all part of entertainment. What sin has marred, and sin has marred this world and our hearts and our bodies, what sin has marred, salvation in Jesus is the great renovation project to heal. So sin enters the world, and now there's a, there's a brokenness in the world. There's perversion in the world. There's sin is infected, death is infected, everything. And, but, the, but, the, but the good news of the gospel is that God sent his son in order to make all things new. He sent his son so that all things might be reconciled in him. All things might be put back together. All things might be healed in him. This means that God came in human flesh in part to restore arts and entertainment. Why did Jesus come? Well, in part to restore arts and entertainment. He said, well, how do you know that? Well, because he came to reconcile us to himself and to one another. He came to restore Fellowship, community. And if he came to restore fellowship and community, in part what he's doing is restoring entertainment and art. What do we do when we get together? We look at the world, we talk about the world, and we, we tell each other about it, we laugh about it, we argue about it, we discuss it, and we are entertained. Right? This, is, this is what community does. You, you get together with your family, with your friends, and you talk about the world. You talk about what happened to you at work today, what happened at school today, uh, what you saw on the news today, this new song that just came out, the movie you watched, the book you watched. It's all connected. But what the gospel teaches us is that everything must be made new through the cross of Jesus. So you can't just become a Christian and say, okay, now I'm a Christian, so I can listen to anything I want. I have magic Holy Spirit filters on now or I can watch anything I want. I'm a Christian now. Jesus, ta-da, you just said it, healing art, so I can watch you know, whatever Quentin Tarantino slasher film I want. I can listen to any you know, Kanye whatever that I want. I can, do, I can watch any show that I want. I, no, that's not how it works. It has to die with Jesus, has to get buried with Jesus, and if there's anything good left in it, it gets raised with Jesus. So that's the pattern. Because that's what happens to you, right? That's what happens to you. If you want to live, you have to die with Christ. You have to be buried with Christ. You have to be raised with Christ. That's what it means to be a Christian. You're a new creation. You've been raised with Christ. But you can't get raised with Christ unless you died with him. Right? This is what baptism means. That's what it symbolizes. You have to die with Christ so that you can be raised with Christ. Well, everything else you want to take with you has to do the same thing. You have to take anything else in this world and nail it to the cross. All right, Jesus, take it. Take it. And, you, and that means that you, allow, you let Jesus take away all the filth, all the sin, all the perversion, anything that's offensive, and you bury it, and then you just wait three days, sometimes, you know, longer, with some of these things. And what comes out is what's holy and pleasing and good and excellent and beautiful. But it has to, be, it has to die, has to be buried, has to rise again. You can't just say, I've got Holy Spirit filters now. So I wanna, I wanna press this into the corners a little bit for you and, and, uh, and talk a little bit more practically then. Hey, what does this mean? What does this mean? So you come, into, you come to something in the world, you say, all right, what can I, but, you know, but can I watch this show? Can I watch this movie? Can I play this video game? You know, there's, yeah, there's some blood and violence, but you know, um, whatever. My friends all do it. 
Um, I like doing, I like watching this, I like reading this, this story series, I like doing this, everyone's doing it, um, can I do it? Okay, here's the verse I'll, I'm gonna point you to. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. James 4.4, 4. it's a real happy verse. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Okay, what's the word enmity mean? Hostile, that's a good word, yeah, hostile. Separation from, it's harder than that though. It's more like maybe makes you an enemy of God. It makes you, it makes you against, it, makes, it puts you in a place of opposition to God. You're against God. So friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. James 4.4. 4. James says there's a certain way in which we must not be friends with the world. We must not. John says it this way. This is 1 John 2.15 and 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is of the world. Do not love the world. We can note this is clearly not a blanket condemnation of everything in the world because God says, it says in John 3.16, that God also loves the world, right? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So how do you hold those things together? Do not love the world, but God so loved the world. How do you hold those things together? Well, he, he explains it in the verse. He says, do not love the world or the things in the world. Anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, what's he talking about? The desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is of the world. So clearly there's a right way to love the world and a wrong way to love the world. There's a right way to love the world and a wrong way to love the world. John is actually making this explicit when he says, the desire of the flesh, or you could call it the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That's the part of the world we must not love and we must not be friends with. We must not be friends with the world in that way. If we are friends with lust and pride, we cannot be friends with God. If we are friends with lust and pride, we cannot be friends with God. So far, you follow me so far? Okay, so far so good? Okay, part this because I haven't made fun of your favorite band yet. It's coming though, yeah. yeah. Okay, part of the reason God doesn't want us to look to lust and pride of the world for entertainment is because it doesn't do what good entertainment is supposed to do. So I wanna walk through some additional Proverbs and, and use Proverbs and their discussion of what good friends do and apply that to what you watch, what you listen to, what entertains you, what you read. So one of the passages I read earlier, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm, okay? This proverb says that you become like your friends. Have you ever noticed this? You hang out with somebody and, you, and suddenly someone says, You've, you started, you say that like she does. Or I noticed that you laugh like he does. Have you noticed that? It happens. You start spending time with somebody and it's like, like you're not trying. You're not thinking to yourself, I want to laugh like she does. Ha, 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 ha. You don't do that. You, know, you don't actually start doing it. You, you it just happens. You're around each other and you're laughing at things together and suddenly you find, and then you're like, oh my goodness. I kind of sound like her. I kind of sound like him. He, he, he says that phrase or he says that word that way. It happens. You become like the people you're around. This is why whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. So, not only that, it's true, but that means then that good entertainment is like a good friend. It makes you a better person. Good entertainment is like a good friend. It should make you a better person. And I don't just mean that, you know, you, you, it's like, um, you know, you, now you know you memorize more of the Bible. You know, that's, that's a fine, good thing to do. But I, but I mean that it just, it blesses you. 
It, it makes you a, a, a better person all around. That includes being a more godly person. But maybe it also means that, you know, you, are, you, you actually laugh more than you used to. Maybe it means uh, it makes you more thoughtful than you used to be. Maybe it means that you are corrected about some things that you, you hadn't seen before. Maybe sometimes it means that it inspires you to do what you need to do. It inspires you to obey God and love your neighbor the way you need to. Good entertainment is like a good friend. It makes you a better person. So stop and say, okay, what am I entertained by? And is it making a, me a better person? Does it inspire me to obey? Does it drive me to love God? Does it correct me sometimes? Does it make me more like Christ? Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Okay, here's another proverb, Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Okay, good friends don't leave you when times get tough. Right? Good friends stick by you. That's what good friends do. But selfish entertainment isn't loyal at all. Selfish entertainment isn't loyal at all, and therefore it won't be there for you when you need it. A great book, a great movie, good music is still good when you come back to it next month, next year, in 10 years. Another way of saying it, it's still good. It's still there blessing you. It will be there for you like a brother. Good entertainment is good at all times. It's still good. So it stands the test of time. So much of what you're being sold is going to be old and worn out in about three weeks. Here, buy this. A man of many companions may come to ruin. This is Proverbs 18, 24. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Again, that idea of closeness of friendship. It doesn't ditch you. It doesn't leave you, but the idea, the contrast is a man of many companions comes to ruin. A lot of pop culture is a scam to get kids to scramble to stay cool and no one will remember that movie. A lot of pop culture is a scam to try to get you to, to think that you will stay cool, but no one will remember that movie. It's like trying to scramble for lots and lots of friends. Have you heard of, have you gotten this song? Have you gotten this album? Have you gotten this video game? Have you gotten this thing? Have you gotten that thing? Are you on that one? Or have you got that one? And, it, and you're just trying to keep up with it. And you are being manipulated, right? That you're being, they're, they're manipulating you. And you I, I need that. I need, okay, I want that one too. And that one, everyone's doing. And, and most of it, no one will remember. You've wasted money, you've wasted time, you've wasted energy, and no one will remember it. Poor entertainment is a snare, Proverbs 22, 24. Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. This proverb in particular talks about anger, wrath, rage. Um, some entertainment really is built on wrath, rage, anger. And you say, well, I don't, I mean, I'm not personally angry when I listen to the guy screaming in the mic. I'm not personally mad when I watch the guy just shooting him, blowing them all up and blowing to smithereens. I'm not personally angry when I'm, you know, shooting the bad guys in the first person Halo 17 game, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I, I'm not personally angry at them. It's just a game. It's just a movie. It's just a show. It's just a book. Okay, okay. But are you a friend with a man given to anger? Are you hanging out with people virtually, imaginatively, in some fashion, who are given to anger? It says, do not go with a wrathful man lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. Is it teaching you to respond with anger? Maybe you don't have a gun in your hand, but maybe you have a gun in your mouth. 
Maybe you don't come back with a, with a shotgun blast, but do you come back with some insult in your mouth? Or maybe it doesn't even get to your mouth, but maybe it's in your head. You know, you'd never dream of actually saying those words, but it comes to your head. You think the word in your head. And Jesus says that if you say that you hate your brother, you curse him in your heart, it's murder. And if you spend time with a wrathful man, you are nurturing wrath in your heart. So again, think about it in terms of you're reading books about people getting vengeance, reading uh, or, or watching movies or television shows where that's, that's the theme. Get back, right? Getting back, getting vengeance. Or the video games. All right. You should also choose your friends in order to honor your parents. There's actually a number of verses that, that pile this up. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27, 9 and 10. Oil and perfume make the heart glad. The sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. So again, that's the idea of friendship. A good friend makes your heart glad. That's good entertainment. Good entertainment makes your heart glad. Do not forsake your friend or your father's friend. That's Proverbs 27, 9 and 10. A good friend makes your heart glad and so don't forsake your friend or your father's friend. I was talking about this somewhat uh, some, with some of you all in the, in the devotions in the mornings. Um, love, cultivate a love for the things that your parents love. Even the, 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 the good entertainment that they love. Allow that to be uh, something. Don't forsake your father's friend. If you wouldn't bring that friend home, why would you download that song? Okay. If you wouldn't bring that friend home, why would you download that song? If you don't want to be friends with the characters in that show, why would you watch the show? Right. Why? Why, why, would, why would you do that if you don't want to be friends with them? I, I would never want to be friends with them. They're horrible. I don't want to be friends with that guy, the way he talks. I don't want to no, know, but it's got a good beat. No. Right? If you wouldn't bring him home, why would you buy the song? Why would you watch the show? Why would you read that book? The one who keeps the law is a son with understanding, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. Real quick, just a note on gluttons. Sometimes you think of, I, I say gluttony or gluttons, and, and you just immediately think of just somebody that, can't um, control his eating, or her eating, okay? You picture like Jabba the Hutt or something, right? You're like, man, somebody out there's, you know, committing that sin, but I don't, haven't never seen him before. Um, no, no, gluttony is fundamentally the failure to have any kind of self-control on your appetites. Many gluttons are skinny, Right? You, can be, you can be a gluttonous alcoholic. You can be a gluttonous um, pornography user. You can be gluttonous in the way that you, um, you are not disciplined in your sleeping habits. You can be gluttonous in your failure to do homework. Right? Right? Glutton, gluttony is just the sin of feeding your appetite, doing what you want when you want it. That's gluttony. Doing what you want when you want. There you go. That's gluttony. And it will have adverse effects. You may not be physically obese, but you will be spiritually obese. Doing what you want when you want will make you spiritually obese. And so much entertainment is here. I'll give you something shiny. It's, like a, it's just like a, a hit of sugar. You want this. Here's what you want. You want a bunch of explosions. I got it for you. Boom, boom, boom. Right? Here, you want uh, uh, sexy bodies. Here you go. Bum, 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 bum. You want a love story. Here you go. It'll be romantic and they'll kiss. Here you go. Okay? They, here, you want, you, you want some drama. You want her to have her feelings hurt first and then like him in the end. Gotcha. Here you go. Okay? What is it? They're just feeding you. It's, it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like the cheap, sugary cereal, you know, and just dump, I mean, okay, Christmas, fine, have some cheap sugary cereal, but really, not regularly, 
Not all the time. I don't, that, that's, that's gluttony. He who is a companion of gluttons shames his father. Cultivate discipline. Cultivate ch- making decisions based on principles. Not, this tastes good, I'm going to have another. I like this. This feels good. I'm going to keep doing that. Oh, this is wonderful. Yet I'm just going to keep doing it. You will be that guy who can't turn Netflix off. Right? Don't be that guy. Or girl. Right? Don't don't be that. Don't you're not just sitting there feeding your appetites. That's selfish. That's the lust of the flesh. That's the lust of the eyes. He who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. Again, he who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. You say, yeah, I would never be a friend with a prostitute. Okay, but would you listen to Beyonce? She's a prostitute. She's a high-paid prostitute. She's a popular prostitute. Right? That's what that is. Right? What, are, what are those women doing? What are the most uh, well-known female pop stars doing? <laughs> sure, they can sing a little bit, but they're mostly selling their bodies. Why would you buy the song? Why would you watch the music video? Why would you want to be friends with them? You say, whoa, wait a second now. I thought you were going to be nice. No, I wasn't. Right? You can be a companion of harlots. You can be a companion of prostitutes through your entertainment choices. Are you watching shows where, you know, they don't show the casual sex, but, you know, there's always the, you know, it goes dark and they all go back into the bedroom and you know what's happening. And then the seed fades away. And you say, yeah, but I mean, so it's pretty clean. It doesn't actually show anything. Yeah, but you're friends with people sleeping around. You're spending time with people who keep doing that. You're friends with prostitutes. The Bible says don't do that. You are squandering your wealth. You're bringing shame to your father. You say, well, my dad likes the show. Well, tell him he's wrong. All right, a couple more verses, and then I'll, I'll wrap this up. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Okay? Uh, one of the words that's used in Proverbs a lot that I didn't pull out of any of the verses for is the word flattery. We live in a world full of flattery, right? You walk into a room, and there's a girl there with a low-cut blouse, and everybody knows it. And you, one in a million, you're not going to hear anybody say, um, so why are you dressed that way? Everybody's going to be like, you know, hi, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hi, nice day. You're good. Uh, how was, how was the, you know, yeah, okay, great. Have a great day. See you. Right? Why? Because we're cowards and we're flatterers. Right? We're cowards and we're flat. Why? What's flattery? Flattery is saying nice things when you shouldn't. That's flattery. Pretending to be someone's friend by being nice when you're actually hating them, by refusing to tell them the truth. Right? Why did you get that stupid piercing? It looks ugly. You say, well, that would be mean. Yeah, it would also be true. Right? Why do you keep putting pieces of metal in your face? God made you beautiful. Why would you want to look that way? Why would you want to do that to your hair? It, you look literally like a clown. Right? But you're made in God's image. Right? But this is, this is flattery. 
right? It's the kisses of an enemy. And every one of us has done this because we're, we're all tempted in the flesh to be cowards. We don't want to be brave. We don't want to tell the truth. And we're flatterers. We want people to like us and we like, want people to think that we're nice. And so you walk into the room and you see something out of whack and you know it's out of, the, out of whack. And the question is, are you going to be a faithful friend or not? Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but profuse, sickening are the kisses of an enemy. Who's the, who's the famous friend in the Bible who gave the kiss of an enemy? Judas. Most entertainment does this. Most entertainment is just coming to you and it's just flattering you. Right? It's just bringing you, it's just feeding your appetites. It's saying, this is what you need, this is what you want, this will make you feel good, this will make you happy. It's just flattery. You're great, you're wonderful, you're cool, you're awesome, you deserve all the best. And so you can tell that you've been marinating in that kind of flattery because you know that if you speak up, it will be awkward. If you say, why are you showing us your breasts exactly? I mean, we're all friends here and everything, but it's really none of our business. Why exactly are you dressed that way? Why exactly are you trying to look like you, you know, got into a fight with Hot Topic, the whole store? <laughs> why? Well, I mean, you know, why? Right, you know, but you've been trained by the entertainment that you've watched, that that is wrong, that that's rude, that that's unkind, that that's hateful. But the Bible says that when you tell the truth about someone in love, seeking their good, it's called love. It's actually being a faithful friend. Every friendship has a gravity. Every friendship has a current that's pulling in some direction. You should never step into a moving body of water without knowing which way the current is pulling. You should never step into a body of water that's moving without knowing which direction the current is pulling. And in the same way, you should never be in a friendship without knowing which way the friendship is going. You should never be in a friendship without knowing which way the friendship is going. And again, apply this to entertainment. Either you are being led toward Jesus or you are leading others toward Jesus. Those are your options. If you're a Christian, either you are being led toward Jesus by your friend, by your faithful friend, or you are leading others toward Jesus. There needs to be a clear and obvious current. There needs to be a clear and obvious gravity. Have you ever been into the ocean and you're out there splashing around in the ocean? having a great time, just standing there maybe even, you know, hardly doing anything. And all of a sudden you look up and there's your towel. You know, I was just, you know, just splashing and there's my towel. Wait out, and then you, you look up again and it's further, right? Because there's a current. It's pulling you somewhere. It's taking you somewhere. Where's your entertainment taking you? Is it a faithful friend? Is your entertainment taking you toward Jesus? Is it making you more bold? Is it making you more courageous? Does it make you love the truth more? Or is it dulling your senses? Most of the modern entertainment in our world is actually teaching you not to care so much. Just ease up, man. Just relax. Just have fun. If everybody's having fun, don't be, a, you know, don't be mean about it. All the characters in the, in the movies and the books, the modern movies and shows and so on, who actually speak up are bad characters. Who say, I don't think you should do that. Right? I don't, I don't think, I think that's wrong. that might be wrong. They're always bad guys. They're always cranks. They're always fussers. And a lot of times, they're dads. Right? In the movies. Right? The narrative is, your dad's probably wrong. He's probably cranky, he's probably stuffy, he's kind of fussy, he's probably wrong. Do what feels good. 
Either you are being led toward Jesus or you're leading others toward Jesus. And the same is true of consuming and creating entertainment. Consuming and creating entertainment. This is how Jesus is the friend of tax collectors and sinners. You might say, well, yeah, that's all nice, Pastor Toby, but Jesus is a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Remember? Remember? He eats with sinners. Remember? Yeah, that's what I do. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm watched, you know, every, every episode, you know, of all the shows. Because I'm a friend of tax collectors and sinners, you know, like Jesus. Right. Except the problem is, is that he forgives, he heals, he cleanses, he sets free, he changes people. Who are you changing? Or are you being changed? And what are you being changed into? Right. Where's the gravity? You want to be a friend with a sinner? Great. Right? So, are you changing them? Are you leading? You say, well, I, well, I mean, I have to be nice for a while, right? I mean, then otherwise they won't like me. That's not how Jesus did it. Jesus was not nice for a while. Jesus walked in and, you know, there's one, you know, in Luke, he walks in for a dinner party. You know, this is a fancy dinner party. He walks in and says, hey, you invited all the people that you want to invite over to your house later, didn't you? Awkward moment. <laughs> hey, I see all the cool people are sitting up at that table and the lesser cool people are down at this table. I, yeah, I see how you did that. Uh, right? Then somebody in the middle of the story just stands up and says, starts offering a toast. It was just really awkward, you know. Uh, I'm going to offer a toast, quick. And Jesus says, I'm going to tell you a story. Right? And Jesus didn't walk in, and, and that's how he made friends. The way he made friends was walking in and just pointing out all the things that were wrong. Joyfully, cheerfully, lovingly, but that's what he did. You say, well, I mean, I, I, mean, I just met this person, and, you know, I mean, it's really, it's really fragile. And No, no, that's not how Jesus does it. He walks in and says, I want to be your friend, and I'm not going to leave you like that. Oh my gracious, what are you wearing? Oh my gracious, what are you doing? You're watching that show? You're listening to that music? That's ridiculous. Come on, I got something better for you. Right? Clear gravity, clear current. I know where we're going. We're going this way. Come on, get out of there. Come on, let's go. Stop doing that. Get off of Facebook. Come on, let's go. Get out of Instagram. Come on, stop it. Let's go. Jesus forgives, Jesus heals, he cleanses, he sets free, he changes us. He doesn't leave us in the dark. He doesn't leave us the way we are. He changes us. He calls us his friends because he's determined to change us. All right, this is it right here. Two last final thoughts on thinking about like building a Christian entertainment culture. Okay, you say, okay, I, I took notes. I'm gonna, I wanna make... I want to create, I want to be entertained by, and I want to make and create good entertainment, good art, and I want to share it. I want it to be, I want to be a good friend to those around me, and I want to be a good friend to the world by bringing good things to share. I want to look at the world God made, and I want to point it out to the world through photography, through um, books, through poetry, through art, uh, through social media. Uh, I, want to, I want to point out good things in the world. I want to be part of that. I want to do what God made me for. Okay, so first off, if you're not practicing faithful friendship in your entertainment standards now, you will not magically grow that backbone when you, make, when you take a drama or writing class in college. Okay? If you're not practicing faithful friendship in your entertainment standards now, you're not being a discerning friend now in what entertains you now, you will not magically grow that sensory perception when you take a drama or writing class in college. One of the surest ways to ensure that you will compromise is by failing to stand for the truth now. You say, when I get strong and big, then I will be strong and big. No, that's not how it works. The way you get strong and big is you eat now. You exercise now, right? You do it now. Yeah, it's going to be a smaller thing than maybe what you'll face before. But remember, when David saw the giant and was like, well, I guess if no one else wants to, I'll do it. Right? What, did, was that the first time David had ever fought anything? No. He'd been practicing faithfully. I mean, you might have thought David, you know, David could have had a really bad attitude about the loser job that the youngest brother got out in the fields with the sheep. Right? But what did, what, no, David was faithful with it. He's the youngest brother and he's out there taking care of his dad's sheep and he's fighting lions and bears, right? He was practicing. So what are you practicing? 
What are you practicing now? Are you standing for the truth now? Are you being brave now? Are you making distinctions now? I'm not gonna watch that. I'm gonna watch that. I'm not gonna listen to that. I'm gonna listen to that. I'm not gonna read that. I'm gonna read this. Are you making those distinctions now? Are you practicing uh, self-discipline, self-government, choosing what is good, choosing what is excellent, thinking about what the Bible says about your friendships, about what entertains you, about your community, and saying, I'm going for that because that's what God says. Don't say you will fly under the radar in order to make a difference later. That's the surest way to know that you will fail. I, I, I just recently noticed this, but you know Daniel when he got to Babylon? You know, Daniel was probably about 16 when he, went, when he was taken off to Babylon. He and his friends were probably teenagers in high school-ish when they were taken to Babylon. They're probably your age. Think about the, all the you know, the chaos of being dragged away from your home to a foreign country. You're in, you know, you know all kinds of chaos. They're maybe never see their families again. Maybe their families are dead. Who knows? And Daniel gets there, and we don't even know. It's like, you know, the, the first day. And they bring out the, 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 the food, and Daniel says, oh, sorry, I, I can't eat that. <laughs> like, Daniel, I mean, like, you know, they can just kill you. Right, you're, you know, you're in exile, they, you know, they just drug you away from your home thousands and thousands of miles, and Daniel has the, 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 the prowess, he has the courage, he has the boldness, he has the strength to say, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a Jew, and, and I can't eat this food. And the guy says, what? You're, you know, you're a prisoner. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Jew, I serve the God of heaven, and I can't eat this food. Um, can I just do the vegetables? That's, that's, that's how you make a difference, right? Daniel gets there and doesn't think, oh, you know, I'll just kind of fly under the radar, I'll just kind of, you know, eat around the edges, and, and then later on, I'll, I'll like be like, hey, but I'm a Jew. Cool. No, that's all he does. He, he leads with it. He walks in and says, I'm a Jew. I'm, yeah, I can't eat that. I mean, that's kind of awkward. It's kind of going to make him, just give it a try. If God blesses it, and if me and my friends are stronger after a few weeks, just let us, just let us roll with it. Right? He walks in flying the flag. He walks in introducing himself, I am a servant of God. So do it now. Don't say I'll do it later. Do it now. Make distinctions now. No, I don't watch that movie. No, that's stupid. I don't watch that. I'm a Christian. No, I'm not into that. No, no, no she's a prostitute. I'm not really into that. No, I don't, I don't do that. I'm a Christian. Second, seek out excellence and pursue excellence. Seek out excellence, pursue excellence. He who walks with the wise will be wise. Christian art and entertainment is not cheap schlock with Bible verses. That's not good Christian entertainment. You don't say something cheap and then put a Bible verse on it. That's taking God's name in vain. Right? If you take something cheap that's not excellent, it's not good, and you put a Bible verse on it, that's taking God's name in vain. Don't do that. It's neither is Christian entertainment vile crap that you can somehow piece together biblical symbolism in. Yeah, yeah, I know there was a lot of sex and violence and everything, but I think there's a death and resurrection thing going on in there. That's not Christian entertainment. Now, it sort of reminded me of like, you know, like, you know when they like the blood spattered, it's like kind of like a cross. Oh, great. Yeah, that's real Christian. Right, you know. No, that's not Christian entertainment at all. Christian art and entertainment is grounded in the goodness and beauty of this world, and it's as broad and as deep as everything God has made. Never be ashamed of Christ or his word anywhere on anything. Don't be ashamed of creation. God created this world in six days. Yep, flood, Noah's ark, giraffes sticking their heads out the, the boat. Yep, I believe in all that. Yep, Jesus walked on water. Yep, it was fun. Yep, I believe all that. Death, resurrection, ascension. Jesus is in heaven right now. Yeah, I believe all that. Yeah, it's just two sexes. Boys, girls, that's it. And there's other options. Yeah, the other people are just pretending. Yeah, right? That's all. It's one, you know, sex is for marriage. That's it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still a virgin. I'm waiting for my wife. I'm waiting for my husband. Yep, it's wonderful. Yep. Not, not ashamed of any of it. Yep, love my parents. Uh, they're awesome. Yeah, they, some of them listen to country music, but it's cool. 
It's, it's cool. Um, good, good. Um, do not use Christ as some kind of emotional or marketing gimmick. Don't use Christ as some kind of emotional marketing gimmick or your you know, very special virtue signal. Think carefully about how your consumption now is voting for a certain kind of world. What kind of world do you want? Your consumption now is voting for a certain kind of world and remember that you're practicing now for what you want to become. This is God's world, he made it. He made it for you to enjoy, to celebrate, to share. Jesus bought this place with his blood, so go and serve him there. Amen.